Elements of Safari by Phantom Most Everything. Chapter 17, Up and Down, Over and Through. Twilight wasn't flying per se, as he does as says standing there, kept off only through sheer content for gravity. Ditsy found it vaguely insulting. She couldn't quite put her hoof on why, though. Pegasus dismissed the thought. She had more important concerns right now, like the assortment of very unpleasant spells the ethereal being was preparing. The planeswalker had re-entered reality, with her mind reserves refreshed. So it was the work of a moment to erect a shimmering energy bubble around her and her daughter. Speaking of whom... Dinky, hold still! The filly complied and felt a weight cell on her head. What's this? A special t helmet, answered Ditsy, ignoring a hiss and spit of magic trying to pierce her barrier. It'll keep you safe while you help me take down Twilight. The young unicorn beam. You're going to let me help by a monster? Her mother grimaced. I don't like it, but I'd be a fool to resist. Focus on keeping her from doing anything, okay? I'll do my best. That's all I can ask for. The duo turned her attention back to Twilight. The glowing being was attempting to burrow through the thin feel of a continuous beam of energy. She wasn't making any visible progress, but mark her words, she would breach the flimsy barricade, eventually. Ditsy gestured towards the rain. If you would. Dinky nodded. They cleansed their eyes shut and focused. The reddest gold lance of energy fell apart like a fuse of a firework. Glancing in a line of blue sparks from its far end to its point of origin at the bear's descended horn. The elder blonde smiled proudly. Well done, nothing! With that, the bubble popped and its creator became invisible. Twice sneered. You think I can't still see you? Sounds the reason. Came to reply, a few instants from the entity's ear. What? The ultra unicorn turned just in time to get another huff to the face, this one glowing white. She was slow to shaking off. It wasn't whatever magic Ditsy had on her hose. Oh, that stung, sure. But it hadn't done any lasting damage. No, it was simple confusion that stalled her. After all, the Pegasus magic seemed to be coming from the ground level, yet there was... Right behind you! The magic elemental took a sucker punch to the back of the head, reason flaring in cold heat like a concentrated peppermint oil. Turning, Twilight only saw a gray blur in the periphery of vision. How are you?! Another blow, this one to the spine. This should be! A gut shot that would have knocked the breath out of her, had she had any. At least let me fit! A swat to the rump, as painful as it was awkward. Edge enough! A spherical blast wave surged out for the living spell, promising a painful demise to all who came in contact with it. It abruptly vanished in the sounds of a trickered whoopee cushion and a giggling filly. Before the glowing creature could focus on this new insolence, she found herself at the center of a coronary assault that shouldn't have been possible for just one mare. Nonetheless, strikes came from every conceivable angle and a few others besides. Twilight's entire body felt consumed in the harmless but painful frozen fire. She managed to put a stop to the onslaught by effecting a change too subtle to notice until it was too late. With a thought, she rent her body to lances and sticky. An instant later, another blow landed, but it couldn't take off afterwards. The transformed pony grinned down at her assailant, now trapped hoof deep in the breastbone. The planned gloat died in her lips as she took it in. What? It had the right color scheme in general, gray and yellow, but it had the right sort of shape if you didn't look too closely. However, whatever it was, it really couldn't be mistaken for a pony unless moving very fast or seen only peripherally. Even as Twilight stared at the curious thing, it crumbled apart. Responses from the weight of her scrutiny, as her order of ruinous energy. As the last few flakes of the phantasm faded away, the shimmering equinoid gave a frustrated snort. <sighs> Enough tricks! I thought you were all about tricks! Twilight released a wave of electricity, filling the area around her with a deadly voltage in less than an eye blink. Aside from the smell of ozone, nothing seemed to happen. Ventriloquist is down, noted Ditsy's voice. There was a moment of brilliance amongst the twisted mare's building range. It would be the work of a moment to grab the output matrix and pull, yanking the Pegasus by the audio conduit and into her hose. That was the theory. The execution went as planned, save that it went wrong, sent the wrong dude flying towards her. Eyes wide, Twilight noticed how the conduit had been threaded through Dinky. She also found herself locked in place until the filly landed on her face and grabbed with all four legs. Then the younger unicorn started cleansed channeling anti-magic into the mutated unicorn's forehead. 
As the living spell faded in pain and panic, Dizzy whispered snuggling to her ear, I'm not as down as I look. Twilight. Before you cut me off guard and exhausted, I passed out three times in the past twenty-four hours, twice from all exhausted. But now, now that you've been kind enough to give me a breather outside time and space, I'm feeling fresh and dewy, and while you've been distracted, I've been tinkering with this paralysis spell of yours, and the best part? She has assistance. Twilight stopped thrashing. Despite what felt like an even hungrier than usual parasite trying to eat its way into her brain, pain was easily ignored when faced with the impossibility now before her. With Dinky distracted, she was able to transpose herself and get a better view. Of course, they left the filly unsupported in midair, but another flying pony quickly caught her, though it wasn't her mother. Nightmare Moon smiled at her fellow aberration, full in tow. Hello, Twilight Spockin'. It's been a while, hasn't it? Moments earlier, the true test of any immortal being is boredom. Each develops his or her own defenses against it. Quite a few revel in the continual excitement of insanity. Others cultivate excitement in civilizations, as a mortal would care for a pet or houseplant. And some, usually, when presented with no other option, take up meditation. Under a millennium lunar cycle, Luna had become very good at meditation. She also become quite skilled at insanity. But that didn't seem particularly constructive at the moment. Instead, with her body immobilized, she decided to wander the corridors of her own mind, contemplating her possible courses of action. At the moment, her mental avatar was lying on an idea of a grassy knoll beneath a night sky that was technically more real than the one above Equestria. The alicorn nipped at this concept of grass, ruminating as he ruminated. Out of ideas... Luna started. Cry when I tear her hose. Who's there? This was her place of utmost privacy, her sanctum sanctorum. Who else would dare enter? Who else could? Oh, relax. As hard as it may be, believe I mean no harm. I just thought we should take this opportunity to talk. The princess thought she should recognize the voice, but no, no, that was impossible. Show yourself. Well, since you asked so nicely. A patch of air dented the visibility, forming itself into a taller, blacker, snootier alicorn. She bore a wide grin. Hello, Luna. The redeemed pony backed away from her dark alter ego. No, this is impossible. You shouldn't exist anymore. And yet here I am. Nightmare Moon's smile broadened. I like to think that we're a sufficiently vassal being, not to question the evidence of a hoof. You do not speak for me! The dragon eyed mare sighed. Look, we clearly have some trust issues to work out. Right now, I need you to believe me when I say that I am as sane as you are. I'm going to consider this for a moment. I fear that says more about me than you. Look, I don't really want to cause a telenite, or banish Tia to the sun, or rule over pony kind with an iron hoof, or any of that other nonsense. I've seen the wonders of the modern world through your eyes. I've seen how the ponies of today love the night. I've heard the joyous hymns the stars sang to celebrate our return. Why would I want to throw all that away for another millennium lost to hubris and imprisonment? I'm going to eye her counterpart suspiciously. Then why are you even here? As I said, I thought we should take the opportunity to talk. You can't hear me when your attention is directed outward. At the very least, you deserve to know that I am still here. Fine, you're here. Anything else? Florenza. Princess? Both moon ponies turned to face the Pegasus, surprised hidden beneath near identical mask of vehicle poster. As well as they said, Ah, does he do? What brings you here? Luna did the right to the credulous scans and amused Nightmare Moon. This planeswalker chose to ignore their antics. Long story. Point is, I'm trying to undo Twilight's binding spell. It used to be the easiest to free. Oh? declared both princesses. Luna scowled at synchronicity. Stop that! We are largely one and the same. Our axes are going to match up on a very regular basis. But, but you, I, we, are! The smaller alicorn pressed her face into the imagined turf. Nightmare Moon brought her attention back to Ditsy. You're the same. Um, right. <clears throat> the gray mare called to Fetlock as she collected her thoughts. It all hinges on how you've been on both sides of the elements of harmony. 
If we use that contrast to bury and target as a liver, we should pry your off your bonds like a stubborn jarlet. The other princess nodded. That would work nicely, yes. But how do we go about employing this lever? We need to bring representatives of the two concepts together as one. We said Ditsy. I guess you two could just have sink. We'll have a try. Nightmare knows her herself. Come on, Lulu. No. This is no time for foolishness. Everything I've hated about myself is back, and she's necessarily similar to the rest of me. The darker night princess frowned, a hint of her old haughtiness creeping into her voice. The distilled essence of your darkest aspects is really to step forward and rescue your sovereign nation, and yet you are not. There, that's the difference between us. What you seem to be embracing. Luna brought her out of her face out of her dirty side. What? But what? Brought her other self. This is a Celestia's time in need. This is a chance to be a true hero to your people. Are you really going to spend this crisis rallying your own self-loathing? Are you going to pony up and act like a monster bucket moon goddess? The small princess brought all fours. You're right. It's time to put away the past. Kick pity to the curve and move beyond the regrettable. Who in our need to stop think we are? Whoa! Do you have a pair of sunglasses in case of emergency every time that sentence is uttered? You better believe it. Nightmare Moon grinned and stepped out for a leg. Hoof bump. Hoof bump. Wisely, Dizzy backed down Lula's line as they made a contact. The scintillating mare got to the acorn. No, no, this is impossible. We purified you. We harmonized you. The mare in the moon grinned at some private joke. Yet here I am. Terror of the night. Regent of lunacy. A Calidurian's modesty. You cannot dispute the evidence of your eyes, Twilight. Can't I? You're just another illusion. Am I? The goddess pointed with one star metal shot hoof. Twilight followed the exterminating to her merciless friends. Luna was nowhere to see. Alright, so your illusion and invisibility spell are the real Luna. Nightmare Moon sighed. This smirk knowingly. Isn't it nice to be so confident in the fate of a conflicting reality? The scintillating pony glared, the energy around her rolling all the more furiously. Shut up! You're not real! Stop mocking me! Her horn shined like a newborn star and at least a blast of noonday sunlight. After it passed, the black girl corn hovered unscathed, her young passenger's horn still aglow and after nullifying the attack. Are you quite finished? I'm not used to being the same one. I haven't a clue what the proper protocol is. That tore it. With an incoherent scream, Twilight charged the princess. Every moon simply descended, allowing the frenzy unicorn to pass her overhead as she helped Dinky dismount. The filly looked at the boogeyman with a mix of fear and awe. I... Are you going to gobble me up? The pacified princess gave a surprisingly worn smile. Loaded to one. No gobbler am I. Luna and I are like two sides of the same coin. I am not a monster. She winked. I'm just a better looking one. This got a bit of laughter. Though it was carefully interrupted by a guest. Look <laughs> out! The unicorn registered the angry purple missile racing towards her. Oh. I sighed. Luna waited patiently. When Twilight was in a few feet of her, the distorted pony was driven into the ground like she had been swatted. You know what one of the best things about sanity? The woman princess said casually. The ability to make plans are all terrible. Twilight struggled, barely able to twitch. You see, we are crazy. Ideas like turn into a thorns to erase a manticore or frighten a bunch of ponies with scary faces on trees seem like they might actually work. You know, because you're crazy. On the other hand, when you're sane, you ought for the rational strategies that actually have a touch, like pit your indestructible opponent in a high intensity gravity field. Nightmare Moon looked at her character piracy. One of the many reasons why insanity doesn't suit you, Twilight. The living spell said nothing. Instead, she simply vanished. The unicorn face of, oh, This falls for a dead monologue! And I see Tia has a friend for dramatic. Can you fix it? Dicky asked softly. I could certainly try. The princess looked around nervously. But first, we need to find her again. Any attempts to do so were preempted by a sudden blinding burst of light. Dizzy was beginning to panic. As he anticipated, freeing Luna had been fairly easy. Transformation into Nightmare Moon had come as a surprise. 
but it was a, probably symbolic of her acceptance of that part of herself, or something. She had neither time nor inclination to part the symbiotic find her paintings right now. One of her more pressing concerns were the other five immobilized ponies. With no convenient economies to work off of, so her attempts to dispel their bonds and field to make any progress whatsoever. That meant the planeswalker had to resort to Plan B. Psychological Tiras. See, one of their best friends twisted into surreal parody was traumatic enough, but being rendered entirely merciless by her, then left to rot? Yeah, that wasn't going to end well for any pony's sanity. Applesack and Rarity were easily coaxed into meditative fugue states. Both boards shocked and bored to crazy. Pinkie Pie had apparently undergone something similar on her own initiative. Probably. At the very least, her mind wasn't in her body. But her residual aura of black magic was. Did she have thought it best not to investigate further? The Pegasi were more troublesome. As the Great Mare could attest, mobility was an essential part of the Pegasi identity. For any winged pony, total involuntary paralysis was even more traumatic than having those wings removed. Freebo, Dias, and Fluttershy both descended into a blind panic by the time Ditsy had snuck towards them. That was all she could do to keep them from going permanently insane. I was like, that was more than she could do. Simple numbers were against her. She couldn't maintain two minds of such instability by herself, not indefinitely. The bond was on the first of employing something powerful enough to draw Twilight's notice, was it became aware of another mind. It wasn't equine, that much she could tell. But beyond that, she could make heads or tails of it. Well, not when you're introducing the lifespans of her friend's sanity several fold. I will attend to Footfire Shine. Telepathic message held an oddity for a mind to mind communicate, an accent. More specifically, the exaggerated enunciation that came from suppressing an accent. How Ditsy was getting that impression, she couldn't say. She could, however, reply, Who are you? Does it matter? Without my assistance. You will lose both of them shortly. Planeswalker bit her lip. Fine, but if she goes mad, I would never be able to forgive myself. As long as we're on the same page. Tizzy felt a strange passage and felt the remains of Fluttershy's psyche. And then, shifted all of her attention to Jazz. The speechless mind was beating itself to a pulp against an unresponsive cage of flesh and sorcery. This wasn't going to be easy. Tiki rubbed her eyes, trying to get her vision as clear as she could. She couldn't stop, stop Twilight. She couldn't see anything. Are you all right, Tinky? Until now, the feeling never would have thought she'd be able to be glad to hear the voice of Nightmare Moon. Of course, she never expected the Mare and the Moon to speak with such worry. I'm fine. I just can't see. Stupid Twilight with her stupid sneaky spells. I can restore your vision. Remove your helmet and it'll only take a moment. Young Unicorn moved to comply, but paused a moment before later. Sorry. I really shouldn't take this off. You just made me say. A few seconds while to hurt, insisted the unicorn. Please, hurry! Dinky shook her head. No, -uh. Besides, everything's getting clearer. What's was that growl? That was definitely a sigh. Fabia, I think I spotted her above us. I'll pursue her! The filly was able to make out a black blob rising towards the heavens. She waved in his general direction. Good luck! Twice sighed beneath her disguise. Stubborn little foal. She was lucky that her mother just happened to have so tricky that made magic avoid her like a plague. Hmm. A plague? That might get her. No. Do her be and that would have tailed too far a graver risk of coral damage, and she convinced the rest of Ponyfield, there was no reason to be worried. Thankfully, that would be easier. She couldn't talk it to a moment. She could just make them feel safe. Not like Little Miss, no magic here. The story unicorn realized she was wool gathering and was still ascending. Whoops! She went back to a more reasonable cruising altitude as she continued to think. A shout in her third ear reminded her what she had been doing after her blinding spell. It was an interesting question. How do you stop a deity? There was a brute force support, but the story of the moon would likely do more harm than good. Twilight could try binding the nightmare again. But as she broke free once, she'd probably be able to do it again. Of course, no matter how the elemental approached the problem, she had to sneak it past Dinky Doo. Fortunately, the filly's mother had been kind enough to offer a suggestion. It was just a matter of distracting the foal long enough to shut the alicorn into non existence. Play say, I'm still here, dummy, for Celestia's connection to her sister, and create an illusion for herself. Don't worry, Twilight transmitted. I'll have you back in time to race the moon. 
She couldn't help but give a satisfied smile as he listened to the furious, profanity-laden reply. Then she slumped and heaved a sigh of relief. Getting Daz to his prospective dormancy had been remarkably like getting a stubborn filly to go to bed. Fortunately, that meant the bubble of the mare was uniquely qualified for the job. She said the massive mental missive to a mysterious partner. Yes, a stable. How's Fluttershy? Calmly content. Now we must induce the next teacher to be taken care of. Twilight? Precisely. I shall assist the Lady of the Moon and your daughter. Keep worrying at the other maids of the tents. I am confident you will find a weak point. Wait! You never told me who you were! There was an impressive smirk. It is obvious. Who else could easily so calm a skittish pony? Dizzy spotted a white dog streaking towards the struggle. She gave him a smirk of her own. Good luck, Angel. Yes, I am. Twilight gave a contented sigh. She really needed a chance to calm down and clear her head. No point could be expected to think straight with that much rage in her system. Now she was back to her reasonable, rational self, and she could reasonably rationally remove the impediments to keeping the equestrian safe. With fire. Her measured, even tempered pyromania was interrupted by an unfamiliar magazine signature. The twisted mare looked up, finding herself the target of a steep dive. She examined the diver, raising the former sight to her eyebrow. You're joking. You're joking, right? Judging by the unwavering plunge, Angel wasn't. Twilight sighed. Honestly, it's like you keep forgetting what they're dealing with. I was her power, and her avid festival vestments unraveled, leaving naught but bunny. He shifted position, going head first rather than leave with a now non existent lance. A living spell took a moment to process the sheer suit spot on display. Okay, I didn't respect that. Another bit of magic and the like of fans set on a collision course on Fireside's bed. Not saying it's smart, but definitely reasonable. She so turned and spotted a more familiar magic and moved towards it. Dizzy bit back a scream. No matter how she analyzed or approached it, she couldn't find a single flaw in the magic to kept the bearers motionless. Protection effects on a protection effects. Double bolstering of instructability reads the rounds. Enough hexproofing that any further magic slipped off of the array like water off a duck's back. It was the most durable, comprehensive, tamper-proof spell complex he had ever seen. No surprise. This was Twilight she was dealing with. Pegasus' face took his realistic stuck. If she couldn't attack the magic, she could always attack the magician. This point was emphasized when everything turned ruddier than normal. Dizzy sprinted away, just before an explosion charred where she had been standing. Darn, huffed Twilight, hovering lazily. Here I was hoping we could wrap up this up nice and neat. She glared at the gray mare. But no, that would require you to cooperate. We can't have that now, can we? Golden Airsy played along her horn. Oh, and trying to use my friends as cover isn't going to help you. As you just saw, I don't have to use flashy trajectory attacks. Dizzy took off an eye blink before a spirit of cry guarantee would have consumed her. Twilight, please! You don't want to do this! Don't tell me what I want! The altered unicorn took a hold of the ley lines around the planeswalker. You pick up this trickle's magical energy. They were no thicker than her hair. Obviously, nowhere near as powerful as the main vessels of magic of the world. Still, they were woven into an invisible, inescapable cage. They filled with enough power to make them explosively overload. At least, in theory. In practice, they responded to her manipulation with a bit of half-hearted twitching. What? Diggy is the only one who knows Karen magic. Between her four hooves, Dizzy held a cerulean orb. Within, glowing lines of light twisted and glimmered. Furthermore, she hasn't had a chance to experience with this fairy east on the theme. What did you? Twilight cut herself off. It was obvious. Impossible, but obvious. The Pegasus had somehow contained her spell and was going to use it against her. She's just going to have to preempt it. Her glowing eyes turned black as the space between the stars as she raided an attack on the fullest pony's very mind. Nancy was interrupted by a white monogorge lion line wrapping itself around her head like a blindfold. As the unicorn screamed, her cause of teeth had ruined. She felt more detergent energy pathways close around her. Tendrils burned, froze, and ached with a hundred different flavors of excrecation. Then they exploded, which made their embrace seem pleasant by comparison. As the smoke ray wafted from her iridescent form, the mutant mare reflected on the myriad of differences between immortality and invulnerability. Once you could see clearly, her adversary was nowhere to be found. A quick search for Dizzy's magic resolved that. 
twilight slowly, deliberately walked towards the apartment in St. Pegasus. Every step tinted the air with colors not found in any rational universe. Oh, that mare would suffer for this. She would suffer! Dinky frowned. Nightmare Moon had gone up until she was barely visible. It does vanish from sight. Then Twilight had reappeared. But the filly had been able to do what he was going to, or even he was doing anything. He just stood in one place for a while. They turned back around and headed for... Oh no. Mommy! The filly galloped forward. Dinky sent skying her. She soon saw her mother on the wing, but any relief was short-lived, given the horror on the mare's tail. Something, no Dinsey, had definitely changed after that last spell, Jack. Before, Twilight's attacks had been a coherent expression of arcane power. Now she was just hurling chunks of raw, caustic mana that surrounded her without bothering to shape it into anything else. Risking a glance, the Pegasus saw the Furious had been apparently grown several digital penances, Bear to chunk hurl with. I am going to erase you time from self! There was the voice. It was a chorus of Twilight's, each expressing her own unique spit on anger. From cold malice to psychotic fury. It was kind of creepy. So was a combination of screams, groans, and sighs. The worst point me when her latest blob of proto magic winked out of existence halfway to Disney. I will make your inseparable spawn watch you die a thousand deaths! Uh huh. The Pegasus landed next to her daughter, gave her a wink, and answered, You know, you make all those promises, but I've yet to see you do anything constructive. The elemental's face literally twisted into a mask of fury. Her features disoriented themselves along with the rest of her body. I will tear off your wings and drive them through your eyes! Dinky whimpered. Her mother brought a comforting wing over her. It's okay, Muffin. As long as we're together, she can't hurt either of us. She's just a big old bag of wind. Twilight grinned. Though her body continued to roil its threats, there was some worrisome lucidity in her eyes. She spoke with a single voice. Oh, I think not. There's one thing, one thing, that I think you're going to find has a very, very major impact on the two of you. The man and creature began a maniacal laugh, her form struggling through colors at furious speeds as it lost what colors it had. She began to fuse like ink of the wire, cackle echoing from all directions. What is she doing? cried Dinky. Dizzy hesitated, scarcely able to believe her senses. She's trying to become one with magic with the world! She's trying to become Equestria! As if I scored a point, an ominous, familiar groan briefly drowned out the spreading elemental's mad mirth. And she's breaking the world in progress! What do we do? If I... The pigs just stopped, disbelief giving away a horror. D no! Mommy... She cut me off. The mare slumped into her rough, staring vacantly. She's in the mana. She is the mana. I can't do anything. She like glared. I can. The laughter redoubled into simple decoration. The sparkle chorus, now rather out of sync, crowed. And what does you think you can do? Tiki Doo did not speak for her answer. She performed it. She took hold of the fast source of magical air she she let the light dominate. Fearing catastrophic misuse and unpracticed hosts. Now she didn't care. It didn't matter as she flooded up a super mega ultra gigantic spell. The world had to about to end anyway. Overglow after overglow encompassed her horn as every last drop of magic was forced into a single spell. A single thought, a single word. No. The light around her horn collapsed into an indefensible point at its tip, then burst out in a beam thicker than Celestia's wingspan. The assault plowed through Twilight's amorphous form like wet tissue paper and kept going. Behind her, it collapsed again. This split into countless dim rays of energy, each drinking into a seemingly random point in the sky, where it appeared as someone's visible scrap of invasive magic. After what felt like an eternity, the spell ended, and after it was still glimmering at Dizzy's eyes. The primary mass of magic, now a large hole blasted to its middle, drifted towards the immobile bearers, collapsing into a lavender blob. The love received itself into a familiar, Tiara adored pony. Diggy was broken out of amazement by her own achievement, by a tinkling crunch. She looked down and saw the flower on her necklace had shattered. Oh! Her mother ruffled her mane. Well, well, easy come, easy go. Dragus' voice struck with sheer disbelief. Come on, let's go check on Twilight. The filly was quiet for a moment as they moved towards the overwhelmed mare. I really did that? You did nothing. Well, Diggy beamed. 
best thing ever. Dizzy chuckled. I don't know about that. She paused by Applejack, nudging her a little. Up and out. There was no response. The blonde frowned. With Twilight very decisively dealt with, the bonds of the air bearers should have ceased to be. And after that fugue state should have been undone by pre-physical stimulus. Applejack? Still nothing. The unicorn frowned. It's shocking. Oh. Both turned. Twilight was shakily getting to her hose. Eyes still glowing. She'll be just fine. She stumbled. Then has to stand. Just fine. Dizzy stepped forward. Twilight, please. It's over. Whatever crisis this is, you can fix it without cracking the plane in half. You don't know that, shrieked the purple mare. You can't know that. None of us can. I have to be sure. Shaking and twitching, she looked around and grinned. And I know how. Her eyes grew brighter. The tiara of magic's falling suit. As the other elements began to light up, the placewalker struggled to grasp the madmare's logic. You're just going to use blindly use the elements and hope they fix everything? No. I have a very specific target in mind, Miss Spellcasting Pegasus! Dizzy pointed a hoof at herself. Me? Seriously? Twilight rose into the air, her friends following suit. Yes, you should not be. You're obviously the heartbreaker of a greater catastrophe. But if I cleanse the world of you, then you can't make it happen! Pinkie Pie can cast spells too, huh? The elements activated, launching a magnificent rainbow of magic into the sky. Most is fused out in a beautiful display of light as it healed the fresh wounds of the structure of the plane. But a small amount went back down, slamming into one bear with enough love and tolerance to cross a freight train. As the display faded, Twilight looked at the dews with a blend of horror and guilt. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. She fell on her face. After a pause, Dickie popped up. Did, did Miss Twilight just use the elements on herself? She didn't mean to, answered Titsy. But, yes. Freeze! Several armors pig aside landed around the pair. Royal Guard! No pony move! The cavalry. Lay as usual. You got a new card! Harmonic Restoration. What color is mana? Two white mana. Instant. Exile the target permanent. That permanent controller may return a card in his or her graveyard that shares a permanent type with that permanent on the battlefield. The elements of harmony do not kill. The correct that switch was not meant to happen. 